Hello, my name is Andrea Burgess. This presentation is a summary of a paper published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology regarding the development of gross motor capacity and mobility performance in children with cerebral palsy. We look at the progress of gross motor capacity and mobility performance of a single cohort of Australian children with cerebral palsy from 18 months to 12 years of age. Capacity refers to what a child can do in a standardised environment and performance is what a child does do in their everyday environment. The longitudinal data is from two prospective population-based cohort studies. In CP child, children were seen up to six times between the ages of 18 months and five years, and the same children were later invited to participate in the study PREDICT CP, and they were seen once between the ages of eight and 12 years. Gross motor capacity was measured using the GMFM66 and mobility performance using the PETI at the 18 months to five years time points and the PETI CAT at the eight to 12 year old time point. This graph summarises the development of gross motor capacity from 222 participants over seven time points. It's plotted against the gross motor curves as reported by Rosenblum. Children classified in GMFCS level one continue to improve up to the eight to 12 year old time point, while children classified level two, three and four developed in, up until four to five years. Children classified in GMFCS level five remained unchanged over the time period. So I'd like to show you videos now of five different children, one child from each GMFCS level. These children all remained fairly stable in their gross motor function classification levels. So stability of GMFCS levels in this cohort was 73%. So there were children who did change GMFCS level, but the children whose videos we're going to look at now were pretty stable. So this young child we see is two years of age. And you can see that he's um, walking without any need for an assistive mobility device. It's important to remember that gross motor function is dependent on age, especially during early childhood. And the descriptors for each GMFCS level are different for the different age bands. So this little boy is two years of age and we're going to see him next at four years of age. So here at four years of age, he's walking indoors and outdoors he has emerging ability to run and jump and he's climbing the stairs. And now we see the same boy again at eight years of age. And he's walking at home, in school, outdoors and in the community. He's managing stairs without the use of a railing. He's running and jumping. Has his participation in physical activities and sports is depending more on his personal choice and environmental factors. And here we can see his GMFM 66 scores plotted on the motor development curve. Now look at a child classified GMFCS level two. Here she is aged two years and three months. She's able to crawl with a reciprocal pattern, pull to stand against a stable surface, cruise along furniture, and walk with assistance. Here she is again at four years of age showing her ability to go up and down stairs using a handrail. She's able to walk indoors without having to use a mobility device. 
Here she is again at nine years of age. She walks in most settings, but does have difficulty walking long distances or on uneven terrain. She has difficulty with running and she's unable to jump. And the limitations in these gross motor skills necessitate adaptations to enable her to participate in physical activities and sport. Here's her GM FM scores plotted on the motor development curve. Now we'll look at a child classified GM FCS level three, and he's aged one year and six months of age. And his preferred means of getting around on the floor is by creeping on his stomach. And then we'll see him again at two years of age. And children can creep on their stomach or crawl on their hands and knees. And we see that he is crawling on his hands and knees and he is actually using a reciprocal leg pattern. He is pulling to stand on a stable surface. But we'll see later that he can't actually cruise a short distance just yet. Children can walk short distances using a handheld mobility device and adult assistance for turning and steering. At four years of age, children are able to get out of a chair using a stable surface to push on or pull up with. Children walk with a handheld mobility device on level surfaces and they climb stairs with assistance from an adult. Now we see him again at eight years of age. He's using the railing to go up and down the stairs. And at 12 years of age, we see him using a handheld mobility device. But out in the community, he's using a manual wheelchair to self-propel himself. And here we can see his GM FM 66 scores plotted on the motor development curve. We'll now have a look at a child classified GM FCS level four. This young girl is aged two years. As you can see, children GM FCS level four have limited ability to mobilize themselves. She has head control, but trunk support is required when she's sitting on the floor. Here's the same young girl at three years of age. She can de demonstrates the ability to roll. And she's able to mobilize for short distances within a room by creeping on her stomach. Here she is at four years of age. Children sit on chairs, but do need adaptive sitting for trunk control and maximizing hand function. Because as you can see here, she uses her hands to maintain her sitting balance. At nine years of age, she is still limited in her physical ability. Children require adaptive seating for trunk and pelvic control and require assistance for most transfers. At home, children use floor mobility, but for short distances or out in the community, powered mobility or a manual wheelchair is required. Limitations in mobility 
necessitate adaptations to enable participation in physical activities. Here are the GMFM 66 scores plotted for this young girl at each of the time points in the study. Here we see a child classified GMFCS level five at age two years and six months. Of so children GMFCS level five have physical impairments that limit the voluntary control of movement. And she's unable to maintain anti-gravity head and trunk postures in sitting or in prone. Adult assistance is required for rolling. And physical impairment restricts the voluntary control of all movement. Now we see the same child at eight years, five months of age. So she still has the inability to maintain anti-gravity head and trunk postures. And she's unable to control the arm and leg movements. And transfers require complete physical assistance of an adult. Some children may achieve self-mobility using powered mobility with extensive adaptations for seating and control access. Many children are transported in manual wheelchairs. And assistive technology is used in the wheelchairs to improve head alignment and seating posture. Here are the GMFM 66 scores plotted on the motor development curve for the time points when she was seen. Cross motor capacity influences mobility performance. Here we see a graph of children's petty and pedicap scores. Children classified GMFCS levels one, two and three continued to show gains in mobility performance up to eight to 12 years of age. Children classified GMFCS level four plateaued at five years and those in GMFCS level five showed no change over time. Some really useful information is provided in the supplementary information of the paper. Radar plots show the percentage of children who are able to perform the mobility items as they're listed in the Petty and Petty Cat for ages one and a half to five years of age. In this example, we see how children of different GMFCS levels perform outdoor mobility items at five years of age. So if we look at the item, how children manage curbs, we can see that nearly all children classified GMFCS level one are able to go up and down a curb. About 60% of children GMFCS level two can, and less than 25% of children classified GMFCS level three are able to manage a curb. This radar plot shows information regarding transfers at five years of age. So if, for example, a family of a child classified GMFCS level three asks you, do you think it's a realistic goal for us to make for our child that they can get in and out of a chair? You can look at the graph with the family and see that about half of children classified GMFCS level three can manage to get in and out of a chair with arms well, half cannot, and so the family can take this information on board. The main limitation of this study, common to many longitudinal studies, was that there were less children who participated in the last measurement time point relative to earlier time points. There are a small number of children in some of the subgroups. However, the proportions of children in each subgroup are representative of a population-based sample and the participant characteristics were not associated 
with retention. So this study shows the relationship between gross motor capacity and mobility performance for children classified in each GMFCS level. Children classified in GMFCS level one improved in both capacity and performance until age 12 years. Children classified GMFCS levels two and three continued to develop mobility performance after gross motor capacity had plateaued at five years, implying importance of other personal or environmental factors. Children classified in GMFCS level four plateaued at five years of age in capacity and performance. And children classified in GMFCS level five showed no changes in gross motor capacity or mobility performance between 18 months and eight to 12 years. We hope that the results from this study may be used to support and advocate for children with cerebral palsy and their families. And we'd like to thank the families for their participation in CP Child and Predict CP. If you have any questions, please send me an email.